Year of the Linux. The hopeful prediction, the meme and joke that has echoed on subreddits and fora for years. Let's talk about it. I'll cover its history, what people mean when they say it, and finally whether 2026 will actually be the year of the Linux desktop. Turns out it's not easy to map the precise history of the slogan, so I went to Reddit. Now, you might say, are you seriously sourcing your history from Reddit? But before you click off, consider this. Yes, Reddit doesn't exactly live up to academic standards of history, but think about what kind of place Reddit is. It's a collection of communities and the r slash Linux is nearly 20 years old. So let's instead think of it as anthropology. We're investigating real online communities. And we can actually learn a lot from reading old posts. And I found discussions of the year of the Linux dating back 18 years. This is the oldest post I found. Not much here, and in this 16 year old one, there's a few users saying that they're tired of hearing the joke. Interesting. Is this the year people will stop asking? Is this the year of the Linux? 11 years ago. Now we're talking. They're discussing the first uses of the phrase, and some say that they heard it in 1998, while most say that they heard it in the early 2000s. So I spent hours that I'm never getting back reading through hundreds of posts like these. And what did I discover? First, many of these posts share the same structure. It looks like this. First, some recent development or news related to Linux. It could be X distro now supports Y, or X distro has Y amount of users now, or Microsoft did X. The second part is the conclusion. Therefore, X year will be the year of the Linux desktop. Okay, but what do people actually mean by year of the Linux? What would need to happen? Here's the most common criteria. 1. Linux becomes as popular as Windows and Mac OS and gain a significant consumer market share. 2. Linux becomes default or common pre-installed OS on consumer PCs. 3. Big software companies and app developers make programs native to Linux. Finally, the most debated one. That ordinary users can install and use Linux without being super tech savvy. In short, when Linux becomes mainstream. Now, now, what's interesting is that it's not clear whether people mean it as a serious claim, a joke, a meme, or a genuine and hopeful prediction, or if they're just being depressingly ironic and sarcastic. And I think that ambiguity is exactly the point. I found that the phrase dates back to the late 1990s when early desktop environments and commercial interest from companies like Red Hat created genuine optimism that Linux was just one year away from going mainstream. And then by the early 2000s, it was already being repeated often enough that the prediction began to lose its seriousness. It gradually became a meme. That history explains why today the phrase can simultaneously sound like a bold claim, a hopeful guess, or a sarcastic joke, simply because it has actually been all three many times before. All right, so will 2026 be the year of the Linux desktop? Let's first look at some numbers, then I'll share my thoughts. I found this article where we can see that Linux desktop market share stands at 4.7% globally as of 2025, up from 276 in 2022. The US is at 5% and a Steam survey reports 3% of their gamers are using Linux. If we look at this graph, something has definitely happened since 2022. And the article says, quote, this acceleration pattern indicates growing mainstream acceptance of Linux as a viable desktop operating system alternative. Okay, okay, so to relate to the first criteria, it's clear that Linux isn't as popular as Windows and Mac OS, but this growth is nonetheless quite significant. Whether that means Linux now take up a significant part of the consumer market share, however, is debatable. As for the second criteria, there's absolutely PCs being sold now with Linux pre-installed, but it's definitely not as common as Windows and Mac OS. And for the third criteria, we have certainly seen a lot of apps becoming available on Linux, such as Spotify, Discord, Teams, Zoom, Chrome, Steam, but there's also being developed more and more great open source alternatives to big and popular apps. 
Finally, that ordinary users can install and use Linux with little tech experience. This is the most interesting one to me. As you might know, I've done two experiments with my girlfriend. In the first, I recorded her using Linux for the first time ever. I think she did very well and she didn't run into many problems. She used Sorin OS, which is being marketed as an easy transition to Linux with a familiar look and experience. But the big reservation here is the fact that I installed it on her Mac. That is to say, I took care of the steps that might actually be the most difficult for a new user. The first step is of course to choose a Linux distro, which might not be that easy. There are a lot of different distros and for the average Linux user that's a great thing, right? But for a potential user it can be quite overwhelming. There's no one Linux to go with. Related to this is the terminology you'd have to learn or at least be familiar with, such as the fact that Linux is not an OS, Linux is a kernel and a distro is the actual OS. This distro also uses a desktop environment. That's to say you'd need to become at least a little familiar with these terms. Then there's the installation. You'd have to learn how to download an ISO and burn it to a USB. Then how to boot from that USB. You'd also have to learn how to back up your stuff before installing. And once you're at that step, the installation part, that's actually not that difficult, but Linux users often recommend reading the documentation. So I don't think it's controversial to say that Linux is not as plug and play as Mac OS and Windows. Moreover, if you run into trouble, you're supposed to again go to the documentation or a forum. However, if you're using Windows or Mac OS and get into trouble, there's a very big chance that you can just ask a friend or someone in your family. And I think this is how most people actually handle their technical challenges. For Linux, we know that it's just statistically less likely that you actually have someone to ask in your network. I also documented her first week using Sorin and again she did very well and she actually liked it. But there were small quirks and challenges which she either asked me to fix or didn't at all. Many of these issues had relatively easy fixes but those easy fixes were not easy for her. This is an important point. I think we as Linux users become somewhat blinded to this perspective. Obviously if we're experienced users we can fix many small quirks but that's also something that we've learned. I don't even necessarily think that I'm an experienced user. I still run into problems and I talk about them in my videos. And then there's comments like just do this or just do that. And they make it seem very simple, but it's actually not. So will 2026 be the year of the Linux desktop? I don't think so, if it can only be that if it lives up to the different criteria that I listed before. But I definitely get the excitement and the hopeful sentiments that we're seeing. But I have one last point about this too. Let me talk a bit about confirmation bias and algorithms. Everyone knows the basics about how social media algorithms work. If you watch a video, like it and perhaps leave a comment, you'll get more videos like that. And if there's something that you don't like, you either ignore it or click off after a short time. This fosters a confirmation bias. You consume content that reinforces your existing beliefs and you discount content that doesn't. This can result in an illusion of consensus. When many recommended videos agree, it feels like everyone thinks this. So to use my own algorithm as an example, there are basically two sentiments of most videos. One, Linux is good and is becoming more popular and mainstream. And two, Windows sucks. But these beliefs are likely confined to a very small group. Right? As an example, my girlfriend didn't even know what Linux is. She doesn't really think of Windows 11 as being bad, it's just 
Windows, just something that you have on your computer. So to relate this to the big question, I think confirmation bias can lead one to believe that this is the year for sure. Linux is becoming better and better and more popular than ever. While these two statements are definitely true, it's not so certain that it will lead to a Linux revolution. So no, I don't think 2026 will be the year of the Linux desktop. At least not in the way the phrase originally meant it. Linux is clearly in a better place than it's ever been. It's improving, it's growing and it's more visible than before. But mainstream adoption isn't just about technological progress. It's about defaults. It's about becoming familiar with the product and it's about friction. And there's still plenty of friction left. In that sense, the year of the Linux desktop phrase has become kind of a tragic meme. It started as a genuine optimism, then turned into a running joke, and now lives somewhere in between. Repeated every time Linux makes progress, half seriously and half ironically. And maybe that's why it keeps coming back. Not because the prediction is right, but because the hope behind it never really goes away. So maybe the real conclusion isn't whether this is the year. It's that Linux keeps getting better year after year. And the meme survives precisely because it's never quite true, but never completely wrong either. If you made it this far, thank you. In just a few days, I'll publish this video. Welcome. Are you ready for a story? A horror story? I'm honestly quite proud of it and it's probably my favorite video that I've made so far. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching and a special thanks to Zeus, Justin, Yen, Ephraeris, Kel and Lester. You too can become a member of the channel if it's financially responsible of you. Right now there are two tiers with different perks but in addition to these all members are invited to join a VIP channel in the Discord. Okay bye.